Okay. Uh, so I'm going to be talking today about coordinate systems and spherical astronomy. Uh, I'm Jamie Leach from the University uh, of Oxford. So this subject has a bit of a reputation for being a little bit dry and possibly even getting into the boring side of things. And uh, as a bit of evidence for this, we can have a look at uh, Bertrand Russell, the uh, famous mathematician and philosopher. And uh, when he was an undergraduate studying uh, mathematics at uh, Cambridge, there are some of his uh, recollections of the experience. So he said, well, thus, while Russell had dreamed of asking and answering fundamental questions about the validity of mathematical knowledge, he found himself instead being trained in the techniques of solving problems in geometrical optics and spherical astronomy, for example. Two subjects of incredible dullness, which I had to get up, he later called them. Russell later said the whole of subjects of mathematics was presented as a set of clever tricks by which to pilot marks in the tripos. The effect of all this upon me was to make me think mathematics disgusting. But anyway, a few years later, you know, he sticks at it, the old mathematics, and, um, you know, here he is writing Principia Mathematica, proving that uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2 from uh, set theoretic foundations. So it didn't put him off entirely of... Uh, didn't put him off for life uh, for maths and physics entirely there, so don't let spherical astronomy do that. So that's the take-home message number one. It's not it's not crazily dull. Second take-home message is um, whenever you're doing it in your own studies and in your own, um, I suppose you're writing some code for your own applications, don't be tempted to... Um, you know, reinvent the wheel when it comes to writing your own code to do spherical astronomy, except in some possibly extreme circumstances. Uh, plenty of pre-existing, high quality, tested, open source um, libraries exist, which you can use. Um, and I encourage you to do that. The scope for making mistakes in writing spherical astronomy code is large. You can get your minus signs, your plus signs the wrong way around, and your signs and your cosines and whatever. And unless you want that particular headache, I would recommend using something that has been developed over many years and, and significantly tested and against other packages in the sky itself. So in Python, which is the main scripting language people use nowadays for astronomy, there's AstroPy. If you're using a compiled language like um, Fortran or C or C++, I would recommend a package called Slalib, S-L-A-Lib. Uh, and you can also use that in Python and Perl as well. And often I've compared the results of AstroPy and Slali if, I've, if there's something that's, that's you know, bothering me or puzzling me. Uh, so both of those are good options um, that you can use. Uh, to talk about AstroPy first, um, it's high level. It's easy to use. You can do what you want in, in at most a few lines. Um, it's in Python, which is you know the same package, the same uh, scripting language as things like Casa. Um, and we'll see some examples of this later on today. And these are the um, this is the language you'll be using for your exercises that you'll complete after this talk. Uh, to talk about Slalib, which was developed by Starlink, um, it's a for, it's written in Fortran, but it can be easily linked to C and C plus plus. It's a little bit more low level than AstroPy, so you need to you know uh, call a few more functions and sort of perhaps understand what's going on a little bit more to use it. However, it's very well documented and tested. It's got a very complete set of functions or pretty much all the functions you'll ever need. It has very fast performance uh, being written in Fortran <clears throat> and it's easy to use with uh, other programming languages like Python, C, C++, Perl, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and if you get completely confused and if you're confused by this talk, the best thing to do is to have a look at a good um, standard textbook on a subject, uh, one of which is Textbook on Spherical Astronomy by WM Smart. But if you put uh, spherical astronomy books into Google, you'll find you'll find others as well. And that will you know explain all of the details, derive all of the uh, results I'll be giving and stating here. And uh, if you want to dig into the subjects, that's a good place to uh, to start. OK, <clears throat> so I'm now going to move over to uh, the main set of slides for the presentation. 
Uh, so I'm grateful to uh, Alec DeWitt from HeartRail uh, for these slides, which I'm going to work through. These slides she put together a few years ago. Um, let's have a look. View slideshow. Should be there somewhere. View. Let's use the full screen, don't you? Look. Yeah, full screen mode. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so coordinate systems for astronomy. So to begin with, um, let's just talk about coordinate systems in general. I mean, the coordinate systems you'll be used to are the standard X, Y, Z Cartesian coordinates that are used in three dimensional space to describe vectors, uh, etc. So the idea is, is you is you have a, a set of components uh, uh, of a vector, which when multiplied by unit vectors in a certain direction, um, describe a, a unique position or, or vector in space. So Cartesian coordinates are the one you, you're most familiar with, but you'll also have come across hopefully spherical coordinates as well in your undergraduate studies. So, you know, you're familiar with this, you have an origin, a reference point, and then you'll have say three mutually orthogonal axes here uh, a preferred direction the z direction is usually taken and then you might um, derive your x x y directions from that as a as a right-handed system and then you'll have a position in space uh, which you'll describe by three unique coordinates um, x y and z okay so that should be familiar enough um, so yeah you've got an origin uh, an axis system with a preferred direction, and then three coordinates will describe your, your point in space in Cartesian system. There you go, and there you go. Easy enough. <clears throat> so the idea with a spherical coordinate system is exactly the same, uh, except you're going to use um, angles uh, as, the, uh, as the coordinates rather than um, rather than distances along um, along uh, linear position vectors. Um, so we might have an origin here, the begin the center of our sphere. We'll define a, a preferred direction, normally called the z-axis or the polar axis. Um, once you define your your um, your preferred direction, that implies the existence of a of an xy plane or equatorial plane going around the equator equator um, and again you can describe the position of points on the surface of the sphere by three numbers in general uh, a distance r from the center of the sphere an angle a uh, measured from the, the plane in this case and an angle b uh, rotating around uh, in this direction. Okay, so you've got R, which is a, which is in units of distance, and then you've got A measured from the projection of this vector onto the plane, and then B, which is measured around from some uh, meridian point, some reference point on the sphere itself, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you can go between the two uh, using trigonometry. You can go between the two descriptions easily enough. Um, so there's uh, x, y, and z in terms of r, a, and b, uh, and vice versa. So that's um, again something you've probably come come across as, uh, as in your undergraduate studies. So the coordinate system that's used uh, on Earth is exactly one of these kinds of um, spherical coordinate systems. So with certain conventions, so and certain names for certain things which we'll go through, this, this whole talk will be quite um, naming of things heavy, so there'll be a lot of uh, jargon, unfortunately. So <clears throat> on the Earth, you have uh, the equator. Well, first of all, you have the uh, north select the north pole uh, which is the axis at which the earth rotates about going through here which then defines uh, a, 
a plane around the widest part of the Earth, which is the equator. And then there's a, a third, what's called Great Circle, which is a circle that passes through both poles uh, that's used as the reference point. And this is called the Prime Meridian uh, or the Greenwich Meridian because it passes through the Greenwich Observatory in London. And that's the position from which the angles of longitude are measured. And the equator is the position from which angles of latitude are measured. OK, so there's your north and south pole there. These lines of constant longitude are called meridians. The lines of constant latitude are called parallels. And there's the basic uh, coordinate system of the um, of longitude and latitude uh, on the Earth. And again, you'll have, you'll have most likely uh, heard about this and studied this in the past. Um, I'll point out one thing about this coordinate system um, is that it is a spherical coordinate system, but it's different to um, the spherical coordinate systems you, you generally use in physics. Because in physics, they decide to measure the angles from slightly different, um, in a slightly different way. In a spherical coordinate system in most maths and physics, you measure, rather than measuring the latitude from, um, from zero on the equator and then in an upwards direction like this, you actually measure this angle from the north pole direction in a downwards direction uh, in this. So if, if you're using a, uh, this would be called theta in your usual uh, spherical coordinate systems in, in most mathematics and physics, and the around direction, the longitude direction would be called phi. Um, so that's a, an important difference to bear in mind. Sometimes you might be uh, you know, thinking in uh, spherical coordinates from your maths and physics studies, and then just move that intuition straight over to your uh, to astronomy, to, which uses sort of a latitude and longitude convention, and you're going to get things wrong because there's going to be uh, a 90 minus the angle uh, difference between a latitude or a or a theta in in spherical uh, coordinates. Okay, so I'll leave it there for part one.